Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Today I want to bust a myth. I want to try to bust a myth. I personally know the answer already, but a lot of you new beekeepers may not. Is it safe to wear dark colored clothes around bees? Or do they simply think you're a bear and sting the crap out of you? We're going to find out. So let's dive right in. First thing I want you to notice here is that these colonies are very active already. And it's, like I say, it's only 1030. Before I show this little experiment, I want to throw this out there. Everybody's bees respond differently to different things. So what you're seeing here may be a little bit different with your bees. And it's nothing to do with the bees per se, but maybe the nectar flow. Maybe you have no nectar flow and your bees are a little bit more aggressive. So consider all options when uh, going to work the bees and uh, noticing an aggressive attitude. Um, also consider different scents and smells. If you've got a cologne, a perfume, um, deodorant with a scent, anything like that that could trigger the bees instead of your clothing, but yet you're blaming the darker colors. So I just wanted to point that out before I go into this video any further. Now check this out. There you go folks, what'd you think? It's kind of the reaction I expected. Absolutely none. I got no stings. All I got is a lot of sweat. And that's because the black shirt ended up being so muggy. So if there is a lesson here, it's for the beekeeper to dress comfortably. If you're comfortable in black clothes or dark colored clothes, by all means wear them. Personally, I'd rather wear light colored clothes just because of the heat. Nothing at all to do with the bees. As you can see, I've got a black hat, a black shirt, and I've just got sweat pouring down my face. Um, it's so muggy, um, even if the sun wasn't out, I'd still be sitting here just sweating. So, if there is a lesson, like I said, it's to dress comfortably so that you feel good and confident when you go out and work your bees. You don't feel rushed because you're sweating. When you rush, that's when you make accidents and accidents are usually costly. So dress comfortably folks. You see me out there jumping around. I scratched on the sides of a couple hives. Nothing. Bees don't care. They're busy working. So let that be a lesson to you. And also take this same lesson and put it in when you're painting your colonies. Don't think that you have to stick with just white. Use any color you want. Um, use several colors if you want. It's not going to play any difference at all to the bees and what they do on the inside of the box. So now I'd like to share this 
update on the Guardian Hive entrance and then we'll finish up with uh, the electric company just spraying some uh, herbicides in our area and I want to talk a little bit about that to finish up the video. Okay folks, so the, the bees in the Guardian Hive have filled up the bottom nuke box so I'm preparing the top nuke box now and I want to go ahead and put the entrance the Guardian entrance on there before I put that on the hive. So well, what we have here, let me explain this again in case you don't recall. This is the upper entrance made by Guardian. It's to prevent hive beetles from entering the hive. Um, if you have not seen the first video on this that I did, um, check in your upper right hand corner. There will be a link. So what we're going to do now is I've already got me a little center point marked here on the box using my uh, one inch butterfly bit I'm going to drill that all the way through and then I will use two screws and attach this okay so I've got my one inch hole drilled um, this is the top of the box you can tell by the hand hold the way it's shaped there um, the way this entrance goes on is with this little lip that's sticking out towards the top that's actually like a little roof that's actually part of the guardian design hive beetles can't hover so they have to land on here and crawl around this little uh protrusion and when they go to crawl around they fall off and land on the ground so i'm going to line my hole up here in the center with the hole i drilled and put a screw on each side Okay, so I've got it attached to the box. We'll now walk over to the bee yard and set it on the nuke. Okay, so you may recall um, it's this row here that we stuck the Guardian on. We're at the back of the hive now, but as you can see, all of those seams are full of bees. Got some nice white comb in there. They're ready for their second box. Um, just as a reminder though, here is and it's going to be hard to see with the sun. Here is the uh, lower entrance. The lower guardian entrance, I guess I should specify. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take this box. And just set it right on top of here, like so. Get my corners all lined up nice and neat. And I'm going to stick some frames in there and get them set up. So now what I'd like to discuss a little bit is herbicides. Um, sure, this is an organic farm where these six colonies are set up. My place is organic, um, but every place in between, not necessarily. And when it comes to power lines, the electric company is going to do what they're going to do regardless what you say. So in the last couple weeks, um, I've noticed some of the trees along the power lines and some of the weeds and brush started to die off like it was sprayed. And within days of noticing that, maybe even the same day, um, I noticed some of the forage at my house started to turn yellow and die off. And just yesterday, I shot this video. I want you to check it out, and then we're going to discuss it a little bit further. Okay, so what we're looking at here is where the electric company had just sprayed. Um, I'm not posted as no spray, but that's going to change within the next couple weeks. I've got signs on order. But just looking here, you can tell that they sprayed this tree and this tree here. Both of those being locusts. Um, the one it killed completely, the other just turned yellow as you can see. But right after I started to notice this tree turning yellow, let's walk over here to the bee yard. Um, right after I noticed that tree turning colors and some of the other forage on the side of the road turning colors, I noticed the brown here on that and some brown here on my sweet clover. 
Now, if we look here, it's pretty much killed this particular uh, sweet clover here, all the way down, dead. Now, if we follow that back to those yellow tree limbs, which you can see right through there, um, must have had some drift that came across and landed on here. So we turn around now and look at the bees. Um, they're only feet away. So after I noticed this, I did call and talk to the, uh, the manager in charge of the road cleanup crew or the power line cleanup crew. And uh, he told me to get more signs out. He also assured me that this was safe for honeybees, but you know, you can blow that smoke up somebody else's butt. If you want to believe what the EPA is telling you is safe, then go for it. Personally, EPA doesn't know if it's safe. They tested it for a very short period of time. Sure, it seemed safe in that time, so they threw it on the market. Look here. Got girls in here working. It's good to see. But it was concerning when this one turned brown the other day. There's ladies all over this working. So this is my little pollinator garden. I've got just off the side of the bee yard here. Over on this side we've got some uh, cone flower. Uh, we've got some uh, wing stem here which is yet to bloom. That'll be blooming here soon. Um, over here have a little bit of alfalfa growing. Not a whole lot of flowers on it. But anyway, I wanted to share um, about this drifting of the chemicals. Um, it's something to keep an eye open for in your area because the electric companies are getting lazy. Um, they would rather spray the chemical. I guess it's not just lazy. It's probably more cost efficient on their side. They don't have to pay a crew for however many days to go out and clear these tree limbs. They can just simply pay one guy drive down the road and spray it. So keep an eye out, folks. So what'd you think? Something that's out of my control for the most part. Um, I did reach out, like I said, and talk to the manager of the power line crew, and um, he's willing to work with me. He told me to get more signs made up, which I made a call today to get somebody uh, in vinyl lettering to make me six signs. I'm going to put four more here up at the front of the farm, and I'm going to put two up at the front of my property against the road. Um, trying to do my part, and I think working with the manager of the power line crew is kind of a, a bonus, I guess. I'd rather work with him than against him. Um, up here at the farm, he gave me the right to brush hog where the power lines come onto the property. He said if I brush hog it and keep it clean, they have no reason to even come on the property. So I was glad to hear him give me some ideas and suggestions to keep him away. Um, but it is what it is, and I suggest that if you don't have any no spray signs made up on your property, take some time, go get some. Either buy them online or do like I'm doing and get somebody to make them. And then get them posted and keep the brush and the weeds cleared from the front of them so that the road crew and the power line crew is able to see them. I appreciate you watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below this video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you have not, and make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Um, I'd also like to invite you over to check out my Patreon page if you're interested in supporting my content. Um, your support will help keep the videos coming from week to week. And that's what everybody seems to like, and I like making them. So, if you got a minute, swing over to the Patreon page, which is listed below and up in the right-hand corner. Thanks again, folks, and we'll see you next week.